Welcome back. It's Digital Trends Live. Again, we broadcast live every weekday, so thanks for joining us. But it is Friday, and you know it is time for Tech Briefs. We are joined by Ken Young from Flipboard. Hello, Ken. Hey, Greg. Nice to see you again. Good to see you, too. A lot that has happened this week. We want to bring everybody up to date on, on some of the biggest stories. There's so many stories out there, but I think we have to start off with Monday and Tuesday for Amazon Prime Day and some of the effect that that had this year, expanding to 48 hours. And I don't know how much longer they can keep calling it just Prime Day. You know, it's going to be Prime Week, I think, by the, by the time we're done with this. Um, but what were, some of the, what were some of the fallout? What were some of the stats that we got from Prime Day this year? Well, I mean, you're basically looking at, uh, they're calling it their biggest Prime Day ever. And, and you're right, this is no longer Prime Day. This is what 48 hours of basically Black Friday gone gone horribly awry. So this is absolutely, they, there's, they, they're saying 175 million items were sold in the 48 hours. And when you factor that into uh, Amazon not having to compete not only with uh, just basic retailers, but also with Walmart, eBay, uh, Macy's, Best Buy, uh, Target, and, and many other companies that want to kind of take a shine off of that. Uh, Amazon here is basically creating the new, uh, the new Black Friday in July. I mean, there's a whole joke about Christmas in July. Well, basically, <laughs> Amazon has brought, brought it to, to reality. Uh, so 175 million uh, products were sold in those 48 hours. Uh, One million toys were sold, uh, 100,000 televisions. Uh, I mean, I managed to just snag an iPad. I kind of, you know, resisted going, uh, going, you know, hog wild on on Amazon. Uh, but I mean, but I mean, the reality here is that look, while Amazon made a lot of money and they did a lot of business, uh, we we also can't forget the fact that there were protests in in the warehouses as well. I believe That's in true. Minnesota. So like a lot of workers were kind of upset with the working conditions there, and and rightfully so. So Amazon also has to deal with that. So they, there was it wasn't all good news for for Amazon uh, last week. But still uh, a big all around, and it, I think it shows the effect and the reach that Amazon has on all aspects, good or bad. So that was Amazon Prime Day kind of recap. We've got lots of digital trends in Flipboard. If you want to go back through and take a look, um, you can probably just check your shopping cart to see how it affected you. Uh, but going uh, forward, also we have the Apollo 11 anniversary, the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, which technically was uh, uh, July 20th, uh, 1969. So that's a huge thing. Just kind of taking a look at that and at where we've come and what an amazing technological achievement that was for its time and even now. I mean, we haven't been back since 1972. That's how far advanced we were back then. Pretty, pretty oh, amazing absolutely. celebration. This is this is this is the by definition the moonshot. Before tech, before Silicon Valley just decided to call things uh, a breakthrough technology frontier stuff, moonshots. This was legitimately the moonshot, and everything else is following is following into that footsteps and, and is is under that shadow. Uh, I mean, this NASA has has kind of uh, has really sparked our, our imagination. They have, they, with the night landing on the moon, they have made, they have showed us that, that anything is possible. And, and even from that, like you can look at basically all the different spinoffs that have come from NASA, things like GPS, the cochlear implants, uh, even, you know, the dust buster have come from uh, innovations that have happened because of space travel. And so now you're looking at other companies now commercial uh, commercial space travel that's happening with with SpaceX and and Blue Blue Origins and many others that are that are trying to get us to the moon and even uh, the the U.S. government is has a mission uh, has a mandate to try and get to the moon I believe in a few years as well so I mean this is this is very sign uh, a significant milestone and and we'll see what kind of uh, new technologies come out in the next 50 years. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's just so exciting looking forward. And I'll say this to at Digital Trends. We have a series of articles that are going up right now called Apollo, the Lunar Legacy. So it's all kind of around this and looking forward. So a lot to follow up on there. So that's big. Also this week, though, we have to talk about big tech and what's going on in Congress. And in particular, Facebook with Libra, their cryptocurrency, getting some heavy scrutiny that is going on right now because they were there for, what, two days, I believe it was, two days of hearings? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, and wait, didn't we just talk about Facebook? Right. I mean, wasn't that just last week? Uh, but you know, this week <laughs> this is, there's another congressional hearing. This time uh, they brought the head of their uh, uh, head of Libra or Calibra, their Facebook's uh, wallet, uh, blockchain wallet uh, system, uh, David Marcus, to testify before not only the U.S. Senate but also the House of Representatives. Uh, those, those the, the specific committees there. So. As you can expect, you know Congress wasn't as receptive to to uh, to Libra as you might expect, and and naturally they they were worried about privacy, they were worried about regulation, they were basically skeptical at at uh, Facebook saying, hey, 
trust us. We know what we're doing. We, you know, we're, <laughs> we're going to do right by, by, by the world. And I believe it was uh, somebody in the Senate that basically said, look, that we don't, we're not buying it. I mean, that's obviously paraphrasing. Maybe you have to look at what the exact quote was, but it's basically like uh, something equivalent of, hey, well, like this is equivalent of a kid lighting matches, and setting things on fire and basically saying, I'm learning from it or, or something <laughs> to that point. So it's like, I'm not really sure I'm buying that, but yeah. as you can expect, uh, Congress and, and the Senate are, are very skeptical. Uh, they're questioning whether this can actually go forward. Would, would, con would uh, Facebook proceed with this um, if Congress and regulators don't approve? Uh, David Marcus said, look, we, we, are, we are going to take this slow and we are going to, uh, we're not going to move forward until we get those approvals. Um, and, but there was a lot of questions, a lot of uh, unanswered uh, you know, inquiries that, that Congress made uh, that Facebook has to answer about in terms of how, you know, what happens with censorship? Are they going to allow uh, hate groups or or people uh, with with malicious intent right. to use that? Who's going to regulate that? And of course, then you balance out with what is you know it, the essence of the blockchain. No one really owns uh, Libra. Right. Um, but then it's also are you? I think it was uh, Alexandria uh, Ocasio Cortez, uh, the congresswoman from from New York, who's who asked like, are we you know, should, why should we trust uh, this consortium of potentially a hundred companies to have uh, acts, uh, to be able to regulate how, the value of, of of what Libra is? Yeah, I mean, and I think it's it is it's interesting to see where it goes. Um, it's certainly one of the most uniting factors that we've seen for political sides because it doesn't matter what side you're on, everybody wants to scrutinize Facebook. Absolutely. So that was certainly something good uh, out of that. I, I guess you know to see. At least some oversight. It's like somebody's got to take some control over this and just make sure that everything's on the up and up. Um, I know that we're running low on time, but I want to make sure that we get in this too because something that's certainly made a lot of news this week is FaceApp. Uh, it started off the week with everybody having fun and swapping pictures and making themselves look like they would, you know, 40 years from now, the aging pictures. That was the whole trend. And then very quickly, it came out that this was a Russian based company and that apparently you were giving away permission for them to use your photos for whatever they want. I think they ended up having 100 and 50 million photos, I think is what it was estimated, that uh, they acquired through this. And that certainly has been a, been a big story this week. Oh, absolutely. I think it's the, the, the name of the game is if you're if you have face in your in your company name, you're basically going to be scrutinized <laughs> at this point. Uh, it's an unfortunate uh, side effect. Uh, look, the, the face up has the company behind face up has been around for multi, uh, for several years, I believe at least two years. And now they're just kind of hit the uh, hit the market. Uh, they've gone viral. And I think you know, people enjoy it just because they fact it, it, it ages you 30 years. Like, okay, what do I want to look like 30 years from now? Yeah. I mean, that that's kind of cool. It's a nice and old novelty. Um, it, it, but I think the fact that people, uh, when it came out that, that the R&D uh, team was based in Russia, anything that, you know, once you mention Russia, it immediately triggers a reaction. Yeah. And so people were very skeptical about what's going on. I mean, this has raised the, uh, 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 has caught the attention of uh, Chuck Schumer, the, the Senate minority leader uh, from New York. Um, who has asked the FBI to investigate FaceApp, not investigate Facebook, but investigate FaceApp over this uh, type of uh, what happens to this data and whatnot. So FaceApp has come out with, uh, with an explanation uh, to, according to uh, multiple reports saying like, look, we, they don't host that data, that it's all stored in the cloud, it's all stored in, on, on American uh, infrastructure. Um, and even though that their team, their uh, R&D team is in Russia, they're not doing anything uh, malicious and so far reports suggest that nothing bad has happened but of course uh, I think this raises the the question in terms of how are people viewing uh, you know privacy and using a, a facial recognition I mean you're already on Facebook you're already using Google you're using yeah. Amazon you're using uh, all these countless things that are processing your images so that's always something that you have to be concerned about like how do you like you can't get uh, 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 get into, uh, into uh, get criticized uh, face up while you're still using all these other things. So it's, I think it's more like looking internally at what, what apps are you using? Yeah, I think that's a good point because I mean, pretty much every app, I mean, who really reads the end user license agreements on everything that you're doing? So you never know what's in there. You think you have to expect some. Um, again, this is just bringing you up to date on some of the news over this past week. It's always a lot and we, we get through as much as we possibly can with you, but you can always follow up at digitaltrends.com or Flipboard and keep up to date with everything that's going on in the world of tech. Ken? It's been another week. We got it done. Thank you for joining us. I will talk to you next week. All right, sounds good.